All right, so we can call the meeting to order, seven o'clock. Uh, we can do roll call when you're ready. Barkle. Here. Evans. Here. Kettering. Here. Michael. Here. Nelson. Here. Weiss. Here. Hoffman. Here. All right, everybody a chance to go over the minutes from the previous meeting. Um, if, unless there's any changes, any motion to approve the meeting minutes from the previous meeting. Make a motion to approve the minutes for the last meeting. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Are there any items to be added to the agenda? Hearing none, um, need a motion to approve the agenda. Um, I'll uh, move approval of the agenda. I'll second. Great, I have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Great, moving on to conflict of interest declarations. We can start with Kathy. Uh, no. Dennis Michael, no. Chris Sparkle, no. Don Gettering, no. Sherry Hoffman, no. Matt Evans, no. Lauren Nelson, no. All right. Now, as usual, we have a few minutes to kill before the first um, agenda item at 7.05. All right, being 705, the uh, first agenda item is Conklin uh, conditional use permit. Applicant is requesting a conditional use permit for horticultural horticulture sales in a low density residential district per article six, section 607. Said property is legally described 
as the southeast quarter of the northeast quarter, section 14, township 93, range 55, county, uh, Yankton County, South Dakota, less highways and roads, E911 address is 31125445th Avenue, Yankton, South Dakota, Mission Hill. Mission Good Hill, evening, South. yeah. The, Bill's here to discuss his project uh, as, as he stated. Um, pretty straightforward in our one. He's just asking to do horticulture sales. So he'll come up and discuss the rest of his project. Hello, I own 40 acre farm just east of town. Um, if you know where the Budweiser warehouse is, it's about three quarters of a mile further east and a quarter mile south. Two thirds I use for ag and a, another third I use for just habitat. Um, I'll show you the whole picture here. So the bottom half is 20 acres I, I rent out. Um, this I keep for habitat. This top portion I used to grow some different specialty things. <clears throat> this year I'm going to try something different. And this is where my garden area is, so you get an idea. It's pretty good size. I'm going to try grow, growing flowers for cut flower sales. My plan is to harvest most of them and take them to like farmer's market and things. But I realize there may be some instances where people want to come out and cut their own special event or something. Uh, to be honest, I don't want a lot of people at my farm <laughs> and it's not gonna be an everyday all day thing. It's gonna be by appointment only, um, but I just wanted to make sure I was in compliance if somebody wanted to come out and do that. Um, we've got 40 acres, I got all kinds of places to park. Um, I can park here, I can park here. I've got all this area to park. I got all this area to park if I want. And it'll change depending on, I'm always improving my farm, doing different projects. So where they park will change, but I don't anticipate more than a handful of vehicles at a time. I just, I don't want a bunch of people coming out. So that is my plan. And horticulture, horticulture is permitted use in low density residential. So I'm just asking for the CUP. So if I have somebody come out to buy I'm compliant. Bill, are you going to use utilize the building that's there for nope. your sales, or you're just nope. going to? No, that's just an old open, storage. Open sales, basically. If they come out, it's either to, I've already cut it and they're going to pay me and take it and leave, or there's some people that like the you know the going out and cutting their own and right. making their own bou bouquet of flowers. That would be the other way they would do it. Okay. And in that situation, you know, I'd be, you know, I'll make an appointment from 12 to one, you can come out and then, you know, I don't, there won't be any buildings or anything like that. No store. That 445th, that comes straight off of Highway 50? <clears throat> yeah. yeah, I was gonna show you that road too. So this is 50, there's a service road here. It's a quarter or half mile to where my farm starts. This is where my entrance is. The rest of it's a dead end road. There's a, a four or five houses down here. We're, we're kind of like our own little community. We take care of each other, watch out for each other's property, help each other out. So, yeah. Have any of the neighbors said anything about the project? Two of them asked me what I was going to grow, so they might want to buy something, and another one asked if he could help. Because <laughs> he likes to grow stuff. Give them a hoe. <laughs> yeah, they don't want to do the weeding. They want to do other stuff. <laughs> they can pick bugs off. Yeah. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. Is there any other questions from the board? All right, thanks, Bill. Is there anybody from the public that wishes to speak on this CUP? Hearing none, I will close public comment on this topic. Um, any further board discussion? If not, I'd entertain a motion. 
I move the approval of the request. I'll second. All right, have a motion and a second, and we can do a vote when you're ready. Oppmann. Yes. Weiss. Yes. Kettering. Yes. Michael. Yes. Barkle. Yes. Evans. Yes. Nelson. Yes. All right. CP is approved. <clears throat> All right. The next agenda item is Gershman conditional use permit. Applicant is requesting a conditional use permit for manufacturing in a commercial oil district for Article 10, Section 1007. Said property is legally described as Track B in the south half of the southwest quarter of Section 33, T94 North, Ranch 56 West of the 5th PM, Yankton County, South Dakota, E911 address is 4400 West 31st Street, Yankton, South Dakota, Utica North. If you remember a while back, we, uh, we did a replat and a rezone. So Ershman Engineering originally owned this tract. They replatted it, added this piece to it, rezoned this entire piece to commercial. They originally had a CUP for this. So they're just refiling for conditions use permit to make this all the same thing and make it all conform for manufacturing. And Eric Taylor is here. Right, Eric, do you want to come on up? Good evening. So we have already gone through and rezoned and replotted the upper part. And so we're just trying to get ours to conform with current zoning and that and making it all industrial. At this time, we do have two buildings on the new area, but we're not looking at putting any manufacturing into it at this time. But we just want to make sure that everything conforms together. Since we've got it replatted, it's all commercial. So at the current time, the the current use isn't going to really change. No, it's just not. To more conform with the zoning no, ordinance. Just keeping it all, making it all the same. And it's just the, again the area just north of Track B was the area that we did before. It's just an effort to make the whole thing so that it's all in compliance. All in compliance together. We added, we increased the plot to the one thing, but the CUP would have been on the original. CUP on the original one is on for the manufacturing. manufacturing. Right. So they just wanted to add that to this commercial right. piece. So, it, so it's all the same. And it means that you added land to it, then you need to re yeah. right. apply for the whole thing again. Yep. So this new, the old CUP that was on there, was there any other conditions put on it? Straight manufacturing CUP. Yep. Is there currently fencing around that north side? Yes, there is. Yeah, on the north side and on the east side, there is fencing with our neighbors. Okay. So there's fence there. Basically, all much the farmland all the way around. Basically yes, around correct. There. Yeah. They, own, they still own the, all that land right to, to the, the west. west. Yes, yeah. correct. 40 some acres, I believe. And that's staying in ag, so. Well, are there any more questions from the board? All right, thanks. All right, is there anybody from the public that wishes to comment on this CUP? Seeing none, I will close public comment on this topic. Uh, any further board discussion? I think it's good to have the whole thing. Done so it's all under the same blanket as far as the CUP. So I make a motion to approve the conditional use permit for first. I'll second that. All right, I have a motion and a second. If there's no further discussion, then we can do a vote when you're ready. 
Barkle. Yes. Evans. Yes. Kettering. Yes. Michael. Yes. Nelson. Yes. Weiss. Yes. Hoffman. Yes. All right. Let's see if he is approved. <clears throat> Next is Platt, uh, Aubert, Platt of lot 42 being a replat of lots 40 and 41, Wildwood Park edition in section three, T93 North, range 55 West of the 5th PM, Yankton County, South Dakota and Mission Hill South. And they're just combining two lots. They're two lots. Wow. All right, I have a motion to approve. Second. In a second. Uh, we can do a vote when you're ready. Barkle. Yes. Evans. Yes. Kettering. Yes. Michael. Yes. Nelson. Yes. Weiss. Yes. Hoffman. Yes. All right. Now we're ahead of schedule a little bit. So technically, should we wait for the we'll wait for 720 before we start the zoning amendment discussion? Yes, we'll wait till 720. And then I think we'll do it like we did in the joint meeting. I'll give Bill the pages. He'll scroll down to the, the red line. And then we can start talking about if there's any comments or if it's good to go. All right, being 720, we can start the zoning amendment discussion. Yankton County Ordinance, we're going to go through, I guess, the definitions. And there's Article 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 
13, 15, 17, 19, and Article 21 and 28. All right, you want to start out? There's some title pages. Uh, it's just so that the existing plots of record that they could be able to build if they correct we basically a lot, of, a lot of people come in that and the number of people as you know come in for variances for buildings on existing lots pre-ordinance so this kind of fills in that gap so all these all these changes tonight are just things that we've ran across regularly or things that Noam put in into the uh, state statute and we're just fixing those things. Basically these changes the only thing that affect is making it who would be constructed on that non-conforming lot historically. What page is that on right now? 44. Okay. Um, did you guys get the one that's on 34? The swimming pool one? Oh, I thought he said this was on 44. On page 34 is the swimming pool. Oh, yeah, we took out all the swimming pools. Yeah. I'm just still have these kids. gotcha. Sorry, I'm just going through just making sure we're not missing anything. I know, we, I know we missed a couple on the last one. The last meeting. Okay, so that last one was for setbacks. Okay. I don't remember, was there any discussion at the last meeting as far as if they wanted different setbacks in these or was, were they okay with these ones? I don't remember for sure. There was one that- So were those were the agreed like upon the ones that they kind of went with, with the 50 in the front and then 10 on the sides and 50 on the back. They eliminated the lot widths, didn't they? A lot of widths or something like that? There were two other side, The side yard is 10 the, there, but those they took out. Original is 75 feet all yeah. the way around. Do you remember, Chris, do you remember which one they were talking about uh, where they were talking change in the rear yard? I, I forgot my notes. Chris had mentioned maybe. maybe going to 20, but they wanted to stick with the 50, I believe, is what was discussed at I the joint I think that was game. on Lakeside Commercial. Or there was one of those, it, oh, too. Oh, that's what it yeah. was. Okay. This one, I think, was pretty much in agreement on the original is 75 all the way around and then this seemed pretty fair and in, in the mid range because yeah, the 75 was causing the biggest problem generally. question I guess on this one here and I'm not sure I, I know it goes through on other ones too but why did why is it necessary to have the word and after 
It just continues to the next paragraph. Yeah. Well, I, I understand that other than the fact that we're, I guess we're doing bullet points and if, if, if you want to someplace along the line and amend this, then we have to approve moving the and or striking the and and going yeah, to some other place. Yeah, we definitely do that if we add or subtract anyway. So. Yeah, and I was just thinking it'd just be a lot cleaner not to have the and there because sure. it's almost like there's something that you're missing out on that same sentence, sentence or that same point that you were going to add and it didn't get done. That's what my confusion was. Yeah, that's just how it's always been set up. So we just continue. Because it's on just about every one of them. So. That's good news. Good to see you. And so we go again. It's 56. We added uh, accessory structures, your structures, permissions. That's on the sixth degree cut the swimming pools again. Yeah, I think so. This, yeah, for the rear yard, but I mean, 25 doesn't matter. Yeah, really. and this, this just helps out this section to, to make it more, people have more flexibility. I've always said that. This is basically in commercial, taking it from two acres to one acre, or a little less than one acre, and then <clears throat> changing the minimum setbacks or yard requirements. Yeah. Was there a reason they went to 40,000 instead of one acre? That's the way they were running the project. Oh, okay. Most all of them say like one acre or 40,000 square feet. Well, one acre isn't 40,000 square feet. So it's basically picking one or the other gotcha. and then sticking Lots. with it. Okay. Just... Lots are smaller. Okay. So I remember, I think it was Dan brought something up uh, as far as septic systems go. Um, it was like minimum lot requirements for septic or something. Do you guys remember that at the last meeting? No. I don't remember if it's one acre or if it's half acre. Um, is this, I'm just trying to make sure I remember. I wish I brought my notes. I just want to make sure that we're catching everything on here. Did you guys go through the notes and everything and change kind of what everybody talked about the last right. time? Okay. Exactly. Okay. Next one is 70. That basically brings 
the same one that we've had in the regular agricultural district into a real transition until exactly. April. Which isn't that what section 519.3 refers to? Yeah. 76, the uh, health taking out the issue we had with that PDP compliance plan. This gives the ability for the homeowners association to do it to exact existing now or to they did kind of find the plan though didn't they found the plan not that one not that one yeah. homeowners i think they're still kind of We just took the uh, 14 days and had a chapter on it. Because we they didn't really want people starting to camp on So this is basically this is taking out like them to have campers there at all. Is that what that is? Yes. Okay. So like on the river, all of these things come up where people that said, well, we can't get much in all the weekends and we can do much there. And they just want to start the trend to have campers down there. Makes a lot. E3, this starts getting into the known statute stuff. Could you ex so, explain that a little bit? I guess I'm not real clear on. Um, I understand the board of adjustment making the you know the decision on something, but when you put a, when you're appointing an alternate or a second alternate, is that to take the place of county commissioner on that? Board yeah, it's so that? that they can have enough to vote and make sure that the okay, that they have the ability to vote on a, it. Is there a criteria as far as picking that person because? Is it just go ball off the street or does it have to be somebody that has some experience in what's going on? It says they would appoint one. So just like when we appoint for planning commission, drainage yeah, commission. I, I, yeah, right. no, that's so people would submit their names, why they feel like they're they would be good for that position, and then they choose. Because I, you know, in, in reality, and maybe that's a conflict of interest, I guess, at a point, but they should almost consider someone that sits on the planning commission because they have the background in the ordinance. I agree. Instead I thought about that also. Somebody else. Yeah. And I think that you certainly could all put your name in for that. Well, I, when, I, yeah. I do that, that whether you get picked or not. But, right. You know, and if you want to take on more things to do, but um, sure. I guess my point, my my question that I wrote to myself here was who qualifies as home? Yeah. And, you know, there there's a lot of, former planning commission people out there too that might feel the same way so our 40 our former com commission people that would certainly step up to do that right so is that how that works is to say they want to appoint the whole county commission would vote on who to appoint as the alternate for say like don and then that would be the alternate for him and there could be an alternate for each person or how does that work no for or is there like whoever they would have to fill the board for to be able to make a vote on that item or is it an alternate for there's like one alternate that serves as and a that could for be anybody on the board yeah right. it could be either so, way the way so i understand it is just thing. yeah you're just like a so you're sick and you call me and tell me to, you know and even though i'm on the commission but in, in this case it would be to have an alternate so if one of the commissioners couldn't be there to vote on an issue i think it, it still it gets a little bit cloudy as it goes as we go down the list here uh, about the majority and the two-thirds or greater thing about who's a lot you know the voting on some of that stuff because um that's you know we, we've witnessed that in, in a, one or two other things that I've been here on that uh, when it came time for the 
Board of Adjustment to vote on something, and if one of them had a conflict of interest, then it became an issue of majority or supermajority. You know, and that's why about. they're trying to keep full boards on those issues so that they can actually make the vote and not hold, hold something so, up. I have a question. Does that mean if somebody lives in Jenna and they know they're going to have a conflict, we would call that that alternate name from to vote in place of that or proxy on Correct. that deal? Because, you know, it's, it's the as we get down to 1715 there, you know, it talks about um, a vote of two thirds, four out of five. Um, <laughs> there's still, I mean, to me, there's still a, an issue there somehow. And I, I'm not sure, I'm not disagreeing with it. I'm just trying to figure out how we can get in a position. But if, if you pick this alternate and you're in a position where somebody has to recuse themselves from a, a vote on the Board of Adjustment, then you have to bring that. Well, and that's what they're trying to avoid. The so then they'd have to try and get two people to come in right. ahead of time so they're not holding it up. That's why we went to two. Do, uh, do you think two is the maximum number that we'll need? For sure. Yeah, it should be. Okay. It should be. That's that's pretty standard across the state. They they generally don't go more than that. Okay. And one of the like what he was talking about, uh, they did want to go to the three out of five other than the four out of five vote. Is that correct? Thought, this was based on gnomes, gnomes requirements, yeah. Yeah, because there was a difference. Even, I think it was uh, Sherry that was talking about even the state law has a conflict between what it says. Uh, so basically, um, it had to do with like the full board or the, or like, a majority of the full board or a majority period, whether it was three out of five. Yeah, I think Sherry that was the concern in the past. Was the issue was a majority of the full board or a majority of the present. Right. And what this is basically going to is a majority of the full board, whether or not they're all there. Correct. Gotcha. So it's my question is, so say if three people show up, okay, uh, and only three people show up and a person is getting a, a CUP or something like that, um, can they push the meeting? That's, a, yeah, I mean, that's that so was the, the issue in the for past. Is that, that's why they decided to go with the alternates so that they tried to where you wouldn't have to push the meeting. Okay, so if there was three- women, That was the goal. Okay. In the past, yeah, that was always the issue is then it automatically would have to get go to the next month so if there was three right now if with these changes if there was three right now they uh, would get only, two alternates they would get two alternates so no matter what there is a full board correct uh, at all times that's, that's a great the idea. goal that's a great idea yeah just taking out conditional use or variance because this is ba just based on the on the building permits on the first one and then 86 we talked about uh, getting basically giving a one-time extension for six months may be allowed at the discretion of the zoning administrator and then it specifies that permitted use and conditional use or variance does not expire for a period of two years following approval and complete completion of the final appeal or the completion of the final appeal on a decision. Basically, it covers those two issues. So, sorry, I'm trying to, I'm still reading back a couple. So, with the conditional use permits before, is this changing like the the days or has it is it just for no it's just cleaning up the wording because there was a lot of confusion on what it was before when it had when it just stated 
a building permit shall expire if the work described in any building permit conditional use or variance had not begun within 180 days. Gotcha. So it's okay. just cleaning that up. Okay. Then 88, it's about the appeal we talked about and gnomes, gnomes language on appeals. So is there any criteria about the, when a circumstance qualifies for a extension? On the building permits? Yeah. Not specifically, no, it just says it's up to the discretion of the administrator. And then say that somebody would wanna appeal that decision, then they'd go to the board of adjustment. Wasn't the intent of this, the building of permit extension, if there were extenuating circumstances, now we just wasted time, something happened. This would clean up that issue when I first started about <clears throat> if there was flooding or something that that'll, this at least allows an opportunity now to extend that in those circumstances. Then 93, duties of appeal. Just cleaning up the language there. <clears throat> On page 100, it allows the, we have some plats where it was 38 acres instead of 40 acres. And so this now gives the, uh, the ability for the county commission to consider an equal half split of the parcel. It's still allowable to, um. to, to do that. There, to me, there is a little bit of an issue on that. And I, I, I agree with the 40, the 40 acre and due to the, the right of way dedication, which everything loads. To right. Off. The only other thing, and I'm not sure how this is handled, but in some situations on some properties, When a fence was put in and the fence is not in the correct place and it's been there over a certain period of time, the new boundary is created, mm -hmm. even though, so is there some way or language that could be put in here that states, you know, that what is considered the legal boundaries, because I have a, I had a piece that even though I purchased it been that way for 20 some years, but the fence was in the wrong place. Sure. And if I was going to sell off 40 acres of that, I wanted to plot it out and because of the road right of ways. And then also because of the fact that that fence is not in the right spot, would be an extenuating circumstance as far as measuring and plotting it to get it to fit. So I don't know if you can, if something can be added or if it, you know, I, I think it could be an issue down the road, not very often, but yeah, in a circumstance that if you're gonna, you know, I, I agree with the right of way thing, but kind of like, <laughs> but then there's something else or another issue that could cause it to be sure. that way out of the. So hand. you're still saying it's under 40 acres then? Right. Yeah. So I mean, I I think that covers it because it says if a parcel is not a full 40. Right. So you could make your argument then and have them decide that. Yeah, just so just so it doesn't say because it right away basically to me is taken off for the roads. Sure. Which that's sure. What would re that's what would reduce yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. But if it, if the I think you can still you could still ask for that of somebody else's property, then you want to be able to right plot that different too. Definitely. And now we're talking about the right of adverse possession. Right. Yeah. I had that on a property I bought. That makes sense. So at least it gives us the ability not to address those issues. Right. And then 108's the last one. And that's the half road issue that we had in the past. And that's all of them. So I had questions on this one. So um, obviously everybody knows about the road that was built by my place. Um, that road was inspected by the county and it met all the widths and everything on it. 
So it's the same width uh, in a 33 foot section as it was in any other section. I'm just wondering. So it's, if it's public right away, it's, there's just a, a few different things. If it's public right away, it's, it's kind of a, a tricky part there. It's public, but it's private because it's privately maintained. So basically my question is, uh, if it meets the road width requirements on it, it's really no different between like a private road width, which is 46, I think, um, as far as like safety, stuff like that. Sure. Um, that, that was my question, I guess. But yours, remember, was a previously platted 16th Street, right? Yeah, so it was within the city's jurisdiction. City's jurisdiction. And, put it on and that's there. where this definition comes from is their ordinance. So they're just matching up with the cities. So, so that they don't have that issue in the future. Which, but that's what my question is, I guess, is that what's the issue, I guess, with having a road that meets the width requirements? They just want to make sure that, as the discussion was at that time, that in the future that they get that they 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 should get the dedications on both sides so that they have a full road. So that was the concern, and that's what what they're trying to address. Okay, I guess I just don't see the concern if it sure, meets I the understand. width requirements. Um, that's that's my thing, I guess. I mean, the county came out and inspected it and everything. And, I mean, and I'm sure yeah. they'll have that further discussion at the county commission level too. Yeah. yeah, I mean, so how how does that work exactly as say it's a, let's see, it'd be 33 feet, okay, on a public right of way. Um, I think on, uh, was it the camper sales place? You guys might have did something, and they added an additional. They dedicated an additional so many feet, uh, so they could have that road there. Remember that at all? Because I don't know if you can do. Can you add it? Let's see. So it's forty six feet. That'd be another thirteen feet that you'd have to add on to it for it to be private. But could it be even private if it was already dedicated public right away? They certainly can add to it, but yeah, they they generally would have to replant to to add to it. So would they replant? Was it just for the shoulders or for drainage or well, what was it for? We're going to run into this problem within three miles of where whatever gets planted within the city because the city will put a road. I think their ordinance, I think their ordinance is like every sixteenth or. Right, uh, eighth, whatever. So 16, every time yeah. somebody plats out, like even on uh, Riverside Acres down there, if they if they plat out the east side uh, of that development, which would technically be Doe Road down there, um, if they plat out the east side of Doe down there, but they don't plat out the west side of Doe, then they can't build a road there. You know what I'm that saying? may be the be what happens in that that'll continue on the entire border like the I'm, way those lots are designed right now i don't think there's any thought thought to extend that at all so to go to the north to go to the north or south yeah that's already all designed out and everything yeah. to build all those houses all because the they're all line. using you're talking not from the coffee shop down. No, no, no. The, the development, the houses. So like if the oh. houses were to build is what I'm sure, saying. Sure, sure. The houses were to build there and yeah. the houses wanted to do on the east side of Doe. Right. And the city required them to do that. They would have to plot out the other side. So how the city works is um, they can't even sell right. the lots until the road is built out. Right. Um, and then the road actually has to be built by uh, the developer, uh, which would be like Kirby Hofer or sure. whoever else. Um, I don't know if we put that in here or what. Um, I think it is definitely an issue. I agree. I think something needs to be put in here. So 
if it is lotted out that the roads are built and they are built to how they're supposed to be before the buyer even buys them. Like when I bought mine, I had to build the roads because the developer didn't build them. Yeah. I believe in our ordinance, it does say the developer. And that's what I had. Them. That's what I did in Brown County too. That's the way we had it is they couldn't sell them until the road was actually completed. <clears throat> so I don't but know we can certainly have that discussion yeah, at the I don't know commission if level. Something we can change to make it more like the city, you know, uh, so roads get built correctly and they're built by the developer and how they're supposed to be done. And one we'll of make the, a note of that. Okay. Yeah. Another one of the concerns was uh, there's a lot of people in Riverside Acres that don't like the campers going on to Deer Boulevard. Um, it was hopeful that uh, they could, my campers from my place, I have like 200 and something campers there, could go from my place and dough would extend to the highway. So it wouldn't clutter up yeah. uh, Deer Boulevard anymore, which, I mean, this, it does have a little bit of flexibility here as far We've as- We've had that discussion and uh, that's, that's why we're doing the study out there, see yeah. what they say. Okay. Right. All right, so this is just the first reading of it, so we're not going to take any action on it today. No, or you would take a vote. Or we do take a vote to recommend it on to the county commission. So I did have a couple questions if we were going to go to a vote. So um, I could have swore there was a couple other things in here. Um, I, I thought there was a red line that I read about like signs in ETJ and then, uh, do you guys remember that at all? Uh, something about, uh, I could have swore I read it in one of the red lines. It said like signs were jurisdiction of the county. Do you remember it at all? ETJ, Bill? typically the city would take complete control. For some reason, when they did it, they let the county remain in control of the signs. We said, if you're gonna be in control of most of it, do all of it. I don't know if, if the county commission decided they wanted to wait on that or not. Oh, so maybe it was redlined and then taken out or something. Yeah, oh. it was on the list, but didn't oh, make it. It was on, it was on the list. list. Okay, <laughs> gotcha. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I think before we do any vote, is there anybody from the public wishes to speak on any of these amendments? Seeing none, I will leave it just to board discussion. I would like, before we vote, I don't know if we can brainstorm something uh, for the commission at all on that uh, roadways. I do think traffic issue on Deer Boulevard is definitely something that we need to think about and uh, moving forward as far as the road widths and stuff like that, meeting the requirements, uh, figuring out some way to word this so it meets a little something a little bit closer to the city's ordinance. Didn't he say there was a study going on though? Do you want to jump in front of a study before? Is there a study going on right now? Okay, so it seems like you wouldn't want to make a decision before the study is finished. That's correct. Uh, we got a DOT grant to do a study out on the, out in the Lake River, that whole area, basically on both sides of 50. Oh, a road, like a road study? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. And so, so the plan is, is they're going to give us some direction on <clears throat> master planning that whole area. And yeah, what are we going to do with Deer Boulevard? What are we going to do with some of these roads that maybe should be pavement instead of gravel? And that those are the kind of things that we'll be doing this summer. Okay. 
when do you expect that report done? We don't have a, we, we haven't even had the first meeting yet, but we did get the grant. And so the next step is for the, their uh, director to, to sign that, and then we'll start having meetings. I would just hate to put restrictions on something even before uh, the study is done. I don't think, I think it was, how many times have you ran into this, Gary, as far as the 33 foot, just in my instance, and that was about it. Yeah. So basically with that change on section 2827, that would just, just make it that lines up, lines up with the city, but you wouldn't be able to make a half street unless you plat, if you plat the whole thing out, then. Correct. And I don't think they're anticipating that the study is going to change. That. No, so that requirement's probably not going to change. The issue that I think you're talking about, Matt, is adding more requirements on there that if you're going to plat it out and you have to have a full street platted with all the other things, then you, you're saying that you want a requirement that they have to have the street to specs before they can start selling lots. So it's kind of two part. So uh, for one, uh, I don't believe that there's any logical reason. Uh, it's not a half width street. It is a half width right of way at 33 feet and it's actually a full spec 24 foot wide road that can fit within that 33 foot right of way so that's one part um, that i disagree with i think that it is safe possible and inspected by the county um, to do that that's one thing uh, the second thing also is instead of if you do want to do something like this uh, as far as uh, half width right of ways, um, then I think it should be, the wording should be cleaned up a little bit to where it says something like the city ordinance, um, such as, because uh, this brings in even, let's see here, dedicating other halves, does it not? The other remaining half of the street shall be platted within such subdivision. I think we should really look at the city's ordinance, see what the wording is on it as far as platting the other half um, and then use that uh, is what I would do, I guess. But that's my suggestion. I'd move approval of the changes as presented and if anybody has any considerations that they would like to have added, they should come to the county commission meeting, so state them. All right, I have a motion to approve. I will second it. And I have a second. All right, we can do a vote when you're ready, unless there's any final thoughts. <clears throat> All right, go ahead. Barkle. Yes. Evans. No. Kettering. Yes. Michael. Yes. Nelson. Yes. Weiss. Yes. Hoffman. Yes. All right, motion is approved. All right, the last item is public comment. Is there anybody from the public that wishes to speak? Come on up. Lloyd Johnson, Violent South Dakota. Uh, just zoning the last couple of years seems to become more of who you are and who you're affiliated with than what the rules actually say. Uh, we had a piece of property that changed ownership here this last year. The previous owner had a trailer house attached to the house that was removed somewhere 10, 15 years ago, and it was parked right on the property line. Uh, this last year with all the wind, it fell off the blocks onto the neighbor's property, not far, maybe this far. 
And then here a week or two, I don't know, probably three weeks ago now, the whole roof blew off and all of the insulation from the ceiling in this trailer house scattered throughout the neighborhood. And the zoning office knows about it. And the lady that bought the property was really upset. And I guess she finally got Rob Clemish to issue a deadline. But she's been there a year and the trailer's been there a year. Uh, got another neighbor that has a little slice of heaven. You know, we don't have 20 acres, but we got horses and we got a couple cows. And we talked the neighbor into letting me spread the manure on some grass that's growing there. And he's covered the two acres with manure and he goes out in the road ditch with the spreader running and he's, he's fertilized the road ditch real nice with the manure. And I got, huh, now, if I tried that with my liquid manure, my God, I'd, I'd be drawn and quartered and burned at the stake. But I guess if it's just a little bit, or these, these were good members of quality of life. And it kind of makes me think that if you're a member of quality of life, you have a different set of rules you get to follow. And I always thought it was equal protection under the law. And we won't even go into the lawsuits going on right now. Uh, my favorite lawsuit story right now is one of the 30, 40 people that sued me when I put up the nursery is now working in a hog barn and absolutely loves it. And I said, why the hell did you sue us? Well, they lied to me. They told me I couldn't have chickens if you guys built the hog barns. And again, it seems like a different set of rules. Now, Matt, on the right-of-way issue, everybody wants affordable housing, and you just keep piling more rules and more rules and more rules on, and every rule costs so much more money. Everybody wants to buy a $5,000 lot. Well, they're going to have fifteen to 20000 in utilities and road. So you're not going to get a five thousand dollar lot, right? And then, well, you can't have an accessory building, so you make the garage seven times bigger. Well, that makes the house a hell of a lot higher priced to start with. Let me um, want to keep it brief. So if you want to, wrap all up. right. Anyway, that's <laughs> just little observations that there's. I don't like the double standard. And. Um, as far as the toxic waste, that was one other thing. You may want to check what's in the city's manure. Check the Michigan Department of uh, Natural Resources. They got problems in Michigan. All right. Thanks, Lou. Any other public comments? Seeing none, I close public comment. Looking for a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. We are adjourned.